Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is getting bigger and better than ever and has a whole host of new playable characters to prove this. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is the classic game that many people consider to be the end of the proper and popular line of versus games from Capcom. Let's be honest, we tend to try our best just to ignore Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and many fans pleas for Capcom vs. SNK 3 have fallen on deaf ears. Originally released in 2011, almost 13 years ago, unlike most titles from its period of release, this fighter has a surprisingly enduring fan base existing around it, with an active community in place to this day. The upgraded version of the previous Fate of Two Worlds would find modern ports in 2016 and 2017, but would be supplanted by Capcom with a supremely disappointing Marvel vs Capcom Infinite later that year, yuck. While Ultimate, back in the day, would end its official run with 50 characters, industrious fans are now doubling that number, making this iconic fighter bigger, badder and more brilliant than ever before. Now that is what I call people power. Holding these exciting thoughts in mind, let's discuss how this passion project continues to pump love into this series and everything there is to know about some of the best fan implemented changes that will be coming to the game. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 Community Edition, yeah. Capcom's long standing history of upgrading their fighting games was best epitomised with the Street Fighter 2 series, adding such monikers as Super, Turbo, HD Remix, Champion Edition, Revival, Ultra and more. When it comes to their crossovers with the Marvel House of Heroes, they've been more full remixes. X-Men gave way for the Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter and the Street Fighters cleared the path for a full Marvel vs Capcom series. When Marvel vs Capcom 3 came due for a DLC pack, Capcom instead pivoted to a full-fledged follow-up remix, Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3. While it was the Ultimate package, the phrase Ultimate Marvel has a significant history for the publisher. Originally launched in 2000 with the series Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men, Marvel crafted a full secondary universe to their mainline universe, which was known as Earth 616. Taking place on the parallel Earth 6160, the heroes were younger and revitalised from a modern era. Spider-Man was no longer a married adult with a long history of defeating villains. He was a teenager trying to figure out how to survive the new millennium. The Avengers were no longer Earth's mightiest heroes, but the Ultimates were a government sanctioned team of heroes with complex problems. By 2015, the sales had cooled and the worlds had merged. The two most significant creations of the universe would survive in the form of Miles Morales, the second and younger Spider-Man who has since starred in his own games and movies from Sony, and the maker, the villainous heel turn of Reed Richards. Visually, these comics would heavily influence the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with the Captain Americas featuring more militaristic designs than spandex, and Nick Fury going from looking like David Hasselhoff to being iconically performed by Samuel Jackson. The publishing banner would come to a close with 2015 Secret Wars featuring a multiversal war, something that Disney looks to be releasing down the road as an Avengers movie. But all good ideas get reused and Ultimate Marvel relaunched in 2023 with a hot new take, Peter Parker being a married father of two when he became Spider-Man. Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 would only lightly touch on the concepts, presenting the best of the best versions of their cast of characters. Not ones weighed down by decades of continuity, but concisely optimised for a fighting game. Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 achieved greatness through its dynamic fusion of iconic characters, delivering fast paced gameplay filled with flashy combos and intense aerial combat. The game's depth and strategic complexity, combined with its tag team mechanics, allowed for intricate strategies and competitive depth, fostering a thriving esports scene and memorable moments in tournaments worldwide. Ongoing support and updates, along with its nostalgic appeal and fan service, further solidified its status as a classic in the fighting game community, captivating players with its diverse roster, frenetic action, and enduring charm. The title is simply spectacular and delivers some of the most intense 3 vs 3 tag team battles ever. 
The Ultimate release comes fully loaded, including all previous DLC and even the Marvel vs Capcom official complete works. By the way, which using my affiliate link in the pinned comments can be downloaded for a ludicrously low $5.62. Which, by the way, is 76% cheaper than Steam, you lucky, lucky people. Grab countless gaming bargains and support what I do simultaneously by using my instant gaming link now. Happy shopping! By the time this great game had come out, many of the Marvel characters could be references to multiple heroes. There's been multiple Thors, Phoenixes, Spider-Men, Hulks, Captain Americas, and the like. In contrast, the Capcom cast of characters have been a bit more singular, with there really only being one Morrigan Ainsland. Then again, we have had a lot of Mega Mans, even a fat American one. But for the most part, a Capcom multiverse isn't really a thing. But really, why mess with perfection? President Kennedy once declared in his race to the moon, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept. One we are unwilling to postpone and one we intend to win. And the others too. None of this could have possibly been anything to do with Russians and a Cold War going on. That would have been preposterous. Speaking of preposterous challenges, on a similar note to this, a legion of developers chose the call and have aimed to double the cast of Marvel vs Capcom 3. While fans adding new characters to fighting games isn't new, after all the Mugen scene exists, Ultimate Marvel has a neat guideline, the characters would have to make sense in that game. Tossing random concepts in Mugen is neat, but conceptualising what a limitless budget and licensing unrestrained Capcom would toss in their ultimate fighter is a goal any fighting game aficionado can appreciate. A trailer from late August particularly highlighted four characters coming to the project, each with their unique connections to the franchise. These include Dan Hibiki, the SNK parody character from the Street Fighter series. Having made appearances in Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter and Marvel vs Capcom 2, he would only make an appearance in the ending for the Sentinel in Marvel vs Capcom 3. Watching the trailer shows that he largely keeps his iconic moveset, including taunts in the fan project. While the owner of the Seikyo Dojo would be heavily outmatched by Marvel threats such as Dormammu and Shuma Gorath, his legendary indomitable will means he will always be up for the challenge. If anything, the Street Fighter comics show that he's not irredeemably dull. When offered the chance to get revenge against Sagart for murdering his father, Dan simply let the man be. The ever-loving blue-eyed thing, real name Benjamin Grimm, is an interesting choice for the title due to the Fantastic Four never truly getting their just desserts in the Marvel titles. A brawler much like Juggernaut and the Hulk the Thing's association with the franchise that was theatrically owned by Fox for the longest meant that Disney wasn't in the biggest rush to promote them, even cancelling Marvel's first family for a number of years in the comics purportedly due to this licensing issue. While the Super Scroll and Doctor Doom, primarily villains of the iconic quartet, would make appearances, neither Thing, Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman or the Human Torch would ever appear as a playable or even support character in these games. Except for the whole team making an appearance as a singular Heroes and Heralds card, notably the entire replacement new Fantastic Four would make appearances, with that quartet being Hulk, Ghost Rider, Wolverine and Spider-Man. With a major motion picture in the works as part of the proper Marvel Cinematic Universe on the way, the chances of at least one of these heroes making a game and appearance in coming years has skyrocketed. This next choice for the expanded roster should be no surprise to the viewers of this channel. God Hands Gene was in the final selection pool for the actual Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3. While Clover Studios would get the stars of Okami and Beautiful Joe in the cast, Gene would only appear as a card in the Heroes and Heralds mode of the title, granting your player a bonus amount of meter while reducing your opponents. In God Hand, Gene wields the titular weapon in his high velocity fights with his enemies, which had the potential to make him a valued member of the cast, and his invincible fist would have been perfect to pair off against the Iron Fist, but such battles will have to remain in the House of Ideas. 
The last addition to be highlighted in the trailer is Nero, the main protagonist of Devil May Cry 4 and the nephew of Dante and Virgil. Much like how Jean was originally up for consideration in Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3, Nero was actually considered for the other Versus franchise, Tatsunoko vs Capcom. Deadpool does name drop him in Deadpool's win quote against his uncle Dante, who did make it into the crossover fighter. He's been voiced and motion captured by Johnny Yong Bosch, a frequently held voice actor who's actually voiced Marvel's own Iron Fist in anime and various Marvel titles and handled the voice acting duties for Zero in the Versus franchise. But for me, he will always be best remembered as the second Black Power Ranger. Come on Capcom, where's my Power Rangers vs Capcom game? Those more phenomenal heroes already have a well regarded fighting game on current gen consoles with Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li and Kami all getting superpowers. So let's just go full circle shall we? Or in this instance I guess I should say let's go go Power Rangers full circle. Nero may have been a bit redundant, with Dante, Virgil and Trish in the mix, giving the now hibernating franchise an outsized amount of attention. While these four got the bulk of airtime in the trailer, other iconic characters have made appearances or otherwise been committed to the title. Azura from Azura's Wrath, Batsu from Rival Schools, and Captain Commando from, well, Captain Commando, all given their minor franchises a bit of love. Joining them, we have classic and modern street fighters like Ken, Sakura, and Rashid, who get to do battle in the crossover. Even the dark robotic Shadow Lady variant of Chun-Li can be seen in the fray. Ruby Hart from Marvel vs Capcom 2 makes her return, and John Talbane shows the Darkstalkers franchise a bit of love outside of Felicia and Morrigan. The X-Men's Iceman, Rogue, and Cyclops all return to the franchise, and new legends such as the Spider-Woman slash Ghost Spider slash more marketable name but makes no sense in canon Spider-Gwen gets her first appearance too. This is unfolding as one crazy spectacle. New costumes for a number of characters including X-23's Wolverine identity, Psylocke's Captain Britain look and Dante's original Devil May Cry design help expand the visual look of the title. With constant character revisions and new costumes throughout the years, it wouldn't be absurd to imagine Electra Nachios as Daredevil, Muscle Mummy Chun-Li or even simply multiple Monster Hunter designs making an appearance down the line. Given that it's been a number of years since even Marvel vs Capcom Infinite saw release, complete with years of development both in Capcom's home console games and Marvel's print and theatrical publications, who would you like to see join the vs franchise nowadays? For me, it's Ken from Street Fighter 2010, but let me know who you want. Don't forget using my link for a limited time you can nab the original with all DLC and buying any games using this link is a great way to support this channel. If you enjoyed this one, check out my recent upload on how Dragon Ball Fighters destroyed Infinite. Cheerio.